we're going to get in the word this morning. We're going to jump into Isaiah today. We're going to be talking about peace this morning. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. If you would just stand for the reading of the word. Isaiah 9, verse 6. If you're there, say, I've got peace. peace. Amen, you got it. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to order it and establish it with judgment and justice, from that time forward, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. We're going to stop there this morning. Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for your word today. We thank you, Jesus, Lord, that you are the Prince of Peace. We thank you today for some of us may become this place that we are, maybe lacking peace in an area of our lives. Lord, we just thank you for just filling us with your peace, filling us with your joy, filling us with your presence this morning, Jesus. So I just thank you, Father, for your word today. And Lord, we just ask you bless it today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. As we kind of get in this Christmas season, everybody around the world, this time of year, of course, it's December, we're getting in the Christmas spirit, obviously. And, of course, people are pulling out their ugly Christmas sweaters, which I had quite a few of those growing up. My mom handmade a bunch of those. They were very embarrassing, like with Christmas trees, like teal colors. It was very 80s looking. And I uh, had a lot of those embarrassing photos growing up with my family with homemade ugly Christmas sweaters. But uh, we're getting around this time of year, obviously people are decorating, getting out their, their Christmas trees, and we're coming upon the season of celebrating Christ's birth. And if you don't know my family, my family takes it to like the 100th level in decorating for Christmas season. I'm sure you've probably heard of Nicholsville, some of you may, maybe, maybe have not have heard of it, but if you go out there, it's going to be full of Christmas lights. I mean, it's just something my grandpa started years and years ago, and it kind of took off. But now there's kind of this expectation, we've got to do it every year, if not, there might be a riot out in Nicholsville if we don't do it. Uh, but there's like trees everywhere inside of our houses. We just, we just love celebrating the Christmas season. It's one of the, the things that we do. We start in October. I mean, it's a big operation when we do this. Um, but we have snowmen in the yard that my grandpa made and with our names on them. That's kind of where he started. And it just kind of took off from there. But one of the common things that we had in our yards is, was a manger scene. It was a nativity. And uh, all of us had that because, you know, we're obviously we're all believers and this is the reason why we're doing it is because of Jesus. And you look at this nativity scene, these, these, uh, uh, these nativity scenes with Jesus and with the shepherds and with uh, the, the camels and the sheep and all of that stuff. And it's just kind of like a peaceful scene, you know, with the star and there's just Jesus laying in a manger, just something that's really peaceful when you look at it. But I remember one year that we had this major winter storm and uh, we woke up the next morning and Jesus was gone and a couple of the sheep, you know, and we had to go on a rescue search mission to find Jesus. And he was across the road in the woods, thankfully in harm. We lost a couple of sheep, but it didn't matter because they weren't Jesus. We could replace those. But uh, I just remember looking at that, just so peaceful. And, you know, we sing Christmas carols this time of the year, a silent night, a holy night, all is calm, all is bright. Round you and virgin, mother and child, holy infant, tender and mild, sleep in heavenly peace. You know, we sing these Christmas carols this time of the year. And when I think of the Christmas story, when I think about Mary and Joseph and everything that they went through, I wonder how much heavenly peace they were experiencing at the moment with everything going on. I mean, they were going to Bethlehem and Mary was on this donkey about to give birth. That doesn't sound very peaceful to me, but they were going to Bethlehem and they were going to this hotel and there was no rooms for them. There was nowhere for them to stay. And they end up in a cave, basically, isolated from their friends and their family, all the unknowns of what's about to happen and all the details. And they're in this place of almost isolation. I wonder how much heavenly peace they were experiencing in that moment because things seem almost chaotic in that story. And I wonder how much a silent night it really was when maybe the baby was crying all night long. Just some of the thoughts that I think about when I think these things, not saying it wasn't true, but I, I think about that a little bit. I wonder what was happening at that time. But at that moment, the promise of God came to the shepherds from the angel. It said, glory to God on the highest, peace on earth, goodwill toward men. There was something that happened in that night, in that moment, with that baby, that when he grew up, he was going to do something, that he was going to establish 
peace, that he was bringing forth peace and he's bringing forth salvation. He was going to tear down the barrier, the wall of separation between God and, and mankind, what was broken in the garden because of sin and, and reconcile us back to God so we could be one with God, so we could have the rights of heaven, the inheritance, so we could be sons and daughters of the king. And it's all because of what he had done. He came back to restore all of this, to establish peace. And a part of the Christmas story and the Christmas message is that Jesus brings us peace. He brings us peace. And the prophecy in Isaiah is prophesied 700 years before these angels appeared before the shepherds and declared this. 700 years. And it said that in Isaiah 9. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. He is the prince of peace, the commander of peace, the the chief of peace. The word peace in Hebrew is translated shalom. That is not a word that we use very often in our language today. It does not mean it's absent of conflict or of of wars. It's a little more robust than that. It means complete and, and wholeness. But at its core, at its heart, it means flourishing. So when Jesus said, I'm coming to be the Prince of Peace, he's he's bringing a flourishing into our world, into our lives, into our marriages. He's bringing forth peace. And just like that night when that angel came, heaven is still approaching us saying there is peace available. Peace is available. God is still in the business of offering peace. He wants us to know his peace, to be led by his peace, to be filled with his peace, to be directed by his peace, to know the Prince of Peace. Peace is available. It is accessible today in in the places of our lives when we're not experiencing peace. It is there because the Prince of Peace, he he has peace to, to give us. And you might be tossing and turning every night and not sleeping maybe in heavenly peace. And you might be filled with anxiety and worry and stress. You might be going through situations in your life right now where you have no peace in your life. It's very chaotic and you can't sleep at night. But there is peace that is available. The Prince of Peace is here today. Maybe on your Christmas list we sing this song, All I Want for Christmas is My Two Front Teeth. But maybe for you this year, all I want for Christmas is peace. That might be some of you today saying that. I just need some peace. Well, the truth is there is peace That is available because the Prince of Peace can give us peace. He is here today and he wants us to know his peace. It's available. I think the first thing for us to understand about peace is that is God's plan for us to have peace. That is his standard. Shalom is God's standard. He wants us to experience peace. If we fast forward a little bit to a future reality Maybe where shalom is the rule in eternity, we say, what is heaven going to be like? It's going to be flourishing. It's going to be peaceful, the way God intended it. Absence of strife and conflict and and suffering and things being pulled apart. That's the way God intended it. Shalom is his standard. His plan is peace. That's always been his plan. And the Proverb writer says it this way. He says, by wisdom the Lord founded the earth. But also in Proverbs it says, and all of her, it's speaking of wisdom, her pathways are peace. In the Old Testament, the priests used to give this blessing in Numbers. And listen to how it's written. It says, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lifts up his countenance on you and give you peace. Shalom. That's the standard of God that you would have peace peace, the world would have peace, our nation would have peace, that you'd have peace in your, your marriage, in your life, in every area that the peace of God would be ruling and reigning in your life. Shalom is a standard. But also as we look at this, even though peace is the, the standard and shalom is the plan, oftentimes though tragedy is our reality because we live in a, a fallen world. There might be some area in our lives that's not flourishing, but it's disintegrating, right? You might get a phone call of a loved one that's, they say, you know what, I've got this diagnosis, and then they're, they're physically disintegrating. Maybe it's cancer. Maybe it's something that's attacked their body. Or maybe if a couple 
that you love and maybe the relationship's disintegrating or, or a business partner, maybe their relationship is disintegrating. Because in this world, we ultimately live in a sin-stained world where there's a pull of sin trying to pull things apart, but God wants to bring that back together. Shalom is a standard. The tragedy oftentimes is our reality. And the solution that God wants to bring in our life is not a peace plan that we have to fit together ourselves. His solution is Jesus, the peace savior, the prince of peace. He's the one that's going to bring in the flourishing into our lives, the peace, the shalom into our lives. His plan was not circumstantial to where we just get him to fix everything in our lives the way we want it to be and we don't have any problems. It's smooth sailing. That's not where peace is going to come from. It's not terrestrial. It doesn't come through the things that we have or the money that we've acquired. They brought gifts to the baby Jesus, gold and myrrh, and peace didn't come from that. It doesn't come through relationships, because relationally, sometimes when things come together, peace doesn't come from that, but it comes from a person, and the person's name is Jesus. That's where the plan is. That's where the solution is. He is the answer to the peace that we need in our lives. That's why Isaiah said that he would be the prince of peace. And on that night, there's this baby being born in Bethlehem, Jesus the peacemaker, being born upon this planet. And here are the angels. They're saying, man, this is a child that's never been born before. No child like it before. Because he's Christ the Lord. And we have the angel choir backing us up. We have the glory of God shining, backing us up. And we have an announcement for the whole world That they need to hear that Jesus is here and he's bringing forth peace. He's tearing down the wall of separation so we can be reconciled back to God. And while the world teeter and totters and while empires rise and fall and emperors make promises they cannot keep, God had a plan 700 years later that the Prince of Peace would come and restore peace. And it would come through him, Jesus, the Prince of Peace. That was his plan. And how did he do it? Isaiah talked about there would be a prince of peace, but he also describes the work of the prince of peace in Isaiah chapter 53. He said this, But he, the prince of peace, Jesus was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. It says this in Romans 4, 25. It says, He was delivered over to death to our sins, for our sins, and was raised to life for our justification. Romans 5.1, it says this, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. There was a time where Jesus, the peacemaker, he went to Jerusalem, the city of peace, and he went to take on the cross to give his life, to take all our anti-shalom, to take our sin, to take all our faults, all our failures upon himself so that heaven could then extend shalom and peace to us. He's saying, you don't have to take the wrath. You don't have to take the punishment. You don't have to take the penalty of sin. I'm going to take that on my life so you can be reconciled back to God. You're going to receive all the rights of heaven, have a seat at the table, be called sons and daughters of the king. And what he lavished upon us, the love, the unconditional love, man, we couldn't earn or deserve. But he's like, you're significant. You're somebody. You're prized by heaven. And yes, you were once enemies of the cross. You broke peace, but I came and I sent my son to restore peace so I could extend my peace and my shalom to you. That's what he did for us. I'm thankful that he left heaven and all his deity and and all that he was and came and took on flesh And lived upon us and lived in our place so that we could receive peace, so we could be reconciled back to God. When we talk about peace, peace isn't a concept, it's not just an idea, it's not just an emotion, but peace. What we're summing up this is a person. It's a person. And it's impossible for you to truly experience peace without having a powerful relationship, an authentic, genuine relationship with Jesus Christ. You can have peace because he has it all and he possesses it all. But you won't have it if you don't have that relationship 
that connection, that genuine, authentic relationship with Jesus. It won't be there. But when we pursue him, peace becomes a byproduct of our relationship with him. You know, peace is not the absence of something, but it's the presence of someone. It's not the absence of conflict. It's not the absence of problems. It's not the absence of wars, but it's the presence of someone. And that someone is Jesus, the Prince of Peace. I can be in the middle of a storm in the boat, everything's swirling all around, but if he's with me, it's okay because he's the Prince of Peace and he can give me peace. So when we talk about looking for peace, we're talking about looking for a person and we pursue Jesus and we connect in relationship with him, the Prince of Peace, the natural byproduct will be peace will follow that because he is the Prince of Peace. And this morning, I just wanted to give us just three things really for us to walk in to deepen our relationship with the Prince of Peace. And I believe if you do these things, the natural byproduct is you'll have peace in your life when you apply these to your life. The first thing I want to tell us is this, is that we need to get up under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. We need to get up under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. The word Prince in Hebrew comes from the word means Sar. It's S-A-R. And that means one, the one who's in charge. The one who's in charge. We think of prince, we think of royalty, or we think of like Prince Charming. I think of prince of like the singer when we think about prince. But it's much more than just royalty. It means chief, commander, the one in charge, Lord. He is the commander in chief of peace. The Romans, they took this word czar and ended up making it czar, which is C-Z-A-R, and eventually Caesar. But it means the one who's in charge. He is, he is Lord. But a, a lot of people don't want to get up under his lordship because we don't want to submit our lives completely fully to him. We just kind of want to add Jesus to our lives and not have that lordship relationship. We just want to add him to the, the mix of, of what we're doing. But we've got to come up under the lordship of Jesus Christ because that's where peace is going to flow. That's where protection is in our lives. If he's not Lord at all, he's not Lord at all. We've got to come up under the Lordship of Jesus. It's kind of like when you go outside and maybe there's a canopy and it's, it's raining. And uh, to get out from the elements, you get up under the canopy to, to stay dry and stay protected. You know, you're not exposed to that any longer. It's like that when we get under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. It's like getting up under a canopy where we're... We're protected. There's a covering. There's protection because God wants to lead you in peace. He wants to direct you in peace. He wants to lead you in pathways of peace. And I want to submit my life to him. He is Lord. That's not a popular message probably today is lordship, the principle of lordship. But he is Lord. Yes, he's father, but he is Lord. And I want to do what he says to do because he's trying to lead me in the pathways of peace in my life. There is a price for peace, and that's complete, total surrender to the lordship of Jesus Christ. We've got to get under the lordship of Jesus Christ. The second thing is, is bring Jesus into every situation. Bring Jesus into every situation. If you don't have peace in your finances, bring Jesus into your finances. If you don't have peace in your marriage, bring Jesus into your marriage. If you don't have peace in your job, bring Jesus into your job. If you don't have peace in your family, bring Jesus into your family. Bring Jesus into every situation, into your whole world. Because I think the problem sometimes is we compartmentalize. That's what we do. On Sunday, we kind of wear these spiritual clothes sometimes, and we do this talk and walk and live a certain way, but we kind of shed that as we leave this place and just live our, our normal lives. But how we live on Sunday is how we should live on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday because God wants to show up in every situation, in every circumstance in our lives. Bring him in every situation. I think the, the problem is, is we have cultural Christianity. There's this spiritual life and then there's this normal life. There's a sacred and the secular. But when we make those, both of those lives one life, that's the day you'll experience peace. Bring Jesus into the rest of your world, into every situation, the good and the bad, because he wants to give you peace in every situation, because he cares about you that much. 
He cares about every detail. He wants to bring peace and a solution and an answer and guide you in your life. I think the third thing is this, is keep your mind on Jesus. Keep your mind on Jesus. Talk about him. Brag about him. Worship him. Love him. Constantly think about him. And when you do, your mind will stay in perfect peace. That's what Isaiah says in 26. It says this, that you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. When I keep my mind on Jesus, when I think about him, he's going to keep my mind in perfect peace. Oftentimes when I get my mind off of him and I think about everything else that's going on around me, I think of all the things wrong, the negative things. That's when I lose my peace because I just see all the troubles, all the problems, all around me. But it says if I keep my mind on him, he'll keep me in perfect peace, my mind in perfect peace. Think about him. Talk about him. Worship him. Brag about him. Love on him. Let Jesus be on the forefront of your mind always. That's my goal, that Jesus would be always on my mind. And out of that place, peace is going to flow in my life. And some of you today, you might need to come up under the lordship of Jesus. Just don't know the Prince of Peace, but get up under the, the Prince of Peace, the Lord, the commander of peace. Some of you today, you might need to take Jesus out of your Sunday experience into the rest of your world. Or maybe today, you just need to keep your mind on Jesus. And some of you just need to let your request be made known to God. That's what it says in Philippians. Don't be anxious for anything, but in prayer, supplication, thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and mind in Christ Jesus. It's going to guard your mind. It's like a soldier guarding your heart and your mind in Christ. Some of you just need to take that request to the king. God, I've got, I've got a request. I don't know the answer, but you do. You're the highest authority. You're supreme. I'm just going to lay it at your feet. I'm going to cast my cares upon you because you do care for me. Some of you might need to do that today. Just cast your care upon him. And when you do, peace is going to come. That surpasses all understanding. It's beyond all human comprehension. You don't understand it. It's going to guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. The Prince of Peace is here today. There is peace that is available. He wants you to experience his peace, to know his peace, to be led by his peace today. I'm thankful that he is the Prince of Peace, that he broke down the wall so we could be reconciled with God, to have peace with God and also have the peace of God. God wants you to live a life of peace. And when we invite him in, the Prince of Peace, peace is going to flow when we pursue him and when we connect with him in a relationship. That will be the byproduct in our lives is peace because it comes from him. He's the commander, the chief of peace. I just want to pray for us this morning. If we just stand this morning. Well, Father, first and foremost, Lord, we just thank you, Father, for coming for us, that you chose us, that you accepted us, that you loved us, that you gave up everything for us and took on flesh, came in the form of a baby. And, Lord, that you walked upon us in this earth, Lord, and, Lord, you took our sin and our shortcomings and our failures so we could be reconciled back to you, have peace with you today. So I thank you, Father, for being the Prince of Peace, for establishing peace today. That's who you are. It flows from you. And I thank you today, if there's some of us here that are not experiencing peace, we maybe have some areas in our lives that's not flourishing, but maybe disintegrating, Lord, we're we're just coming to you today in those areas, Lord. We don't know what to do with it, but Lord, you know, and I thank you for giving us peace. Your, your, your peace plan is, is you. You are the solution. You are the answer, Father, in these areas. So if that's you this morning, says, you know what? I just need peace today. I've got an area in my life that I'm really lacking peace today, and I need the Prince of Peace to touch my life and to give me peace. If that's just you, just lift up your hands this morning. I just want to pray for you today. Well, Father, I thank you for those who have lifted their hands. I thank you, Jesus, the Prince of Peace. I thank you, Father, 
for touching their lives. I thank you for touching those areas where they have maybe anxiety, have worry, maybe have, have fear, have, have doubt and all the chaos and all the storms of life and, and every area, Father. I thank you for giving them supernatural peace this morning, peace that comes from heaven, not of this world. It's not like, not, not like yours, but it's fragile. But your, your peace is beyond human comprehension, beyond what we can understand. It is heavenly peace. So I thank you for heavenly peace invading us this morning. We thank you for your peace this morning. We thank you, Jesus, that you are the Prince of Peace. We thank you for touching our lives today in the areas as lacking peace, Father, in the areas that might be disintegrating, Father. It's not flourishing. I thank you for, for touching us today. We just cast our cares upon you. We let our requests be made known known to you today, Father, and we take it to you, the King of Kings today, the Prince of Peace, the wonderful Counselor, Mighty God. We thank you that you are able and that you are good and that you are mighty today, Father. And when we don't have the answers, you have the answer, Jesus. So we just thank you today, Father. We lay it at your feet. We cast our cares upon you because you do care for us today, Father. We thank you that you care for every de detail in our lives, Father. And I just thank you for waves of peace just coming over us this morning. Waves of peace. I speak peace, peace, your peace today, Father. Your peace, your peace. I speak peace, peace. We thank you, Jesus, for your peace. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for your peace today. And for touching these areas in our lives. Every person that's raised their hand today, Father, I just thank you. They're going to walk out with a greater peace, knowing that you are the Prince of Peace this morning. And if there's anybody here this morning that says, you know what, I'm, I want to give my life to Jesus. I want the peace with God. I want to come under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. If that's you today, it says, you know what, I want to receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior today. I just want you to lift your hand, and I want to pray for you this morning. Father, we do thank you today. Thank you for the season we're in and celebrating your birth. We thank you, you are so good. You are so amazing, so beautiful, so mighty. You are wonderful. We thank you today that you are the Prince of Peace. And Lord, I just thank you for your peace just washing over your sons and daughters this morning. They would just be full of your peace covered in your peace and take it to the world that desperately needs peace today, Jesus. So I just speak a blessing over your sons and daughters today. And Lord, we just thank you today for all that you are and for being our peace this morning, Jesus. Lord, we just love you. And we just bless you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Amen.